Have you gone to the lake recently and struggled to catch bass offshore? If you have, it's likely that the bass were suspended around offshore structure and inactive. In this video, I'm going to explain how you can target these suspended, inactive bass with a variety of lures and retrieves to put more fish in the boat on these tough offshore fishing days. Let's get into it. I'll start by explaining what an inactive bass is. When you're fishing offshore, you're usually fishing around a structure area where there's a sharp drop off from shallower to deeper water. In this case, we have a ledge that drops off into a creek channel. Most of the time when bass are actively feeding and in an active mode, they're setting up on top of the offshore structure in shallower water, but close to that drop off or the deeper water. However, when the bass are not actively feeding or inactive, they're going to suspend over the deeper water, over the creek channel as example, and they're not going to be positioned on top of the ledge. Here's another way to visualize this concept using a drone shot. Again, we have an offshore ledge where there's shallower water dropping in deeper water. When the bass are actively feeding, they're going to be setting up on the shallower water area in maybe 15 to 20 feet of water. However, when they're inactive, they're going to be off the ledge, suspended over the creek channel that might be in 40 to 60 feet of water. When you're on the lake, you can identify if the fish are in an active or inactive mode on offshore structure by using the down imaging view on your fish finder. In this example, we have a ledge with the shallower water here and the creek channel which has deeper water over here. On top of the ledge, you will see a school of bass that is positioned somewhat tight to the bottom and it's in an active feeding mode because it's on top of the ledge. Here's one more example of an active school of bass on a ledge. Again, we have the top of the ledge and the creek channel pointed out here. We also have this active school of bass that is positioned on top of that ledge. This group of fish is actually spread out a little bit more, and some of those bass are suspended higher off the bottom, but they're still on top of the ledge, meaning they're actively feeding. You can also see a ball of bait fish next to that school of fish, and that's what those fish are feeding on. Whenever those fish are on top of the ledge, they're very catchable, and you can usually catch them on a variety of baits that you traditionally would think to fish offshore. Now, unfortunately, bass can't be in an active feeding mode all the time. For example, in this image, you'll see another ledge. The top of the ledge is here, and we have the creek channel over here. We also can see a suspended school of bass that's sitting off the ledge over the creek channel. These bass are not on top of the ledge like the last two schools, but they're close enough to the ledge that you can tell that they're still relating to it. This is what I would call an inactive school of bass that's suspended over the top of the creek channel. Here's another example of an inactive school of bass using the 2D view on my fish finder. Again, we have the top of the ledge and the creek channel here, and then we have a school of bass that's sitting over the creek channel, not on top of the ledge, but close to it. The reason we can tell these are bass is because they're positioned horizontally more than vertically, and they're also stacked no more than two to three fish high. Again, these bass are not in an active feeding mode. When they do want to feed, they're going to move up on top of that ledge, and this is usually triggered by a school of bait fish moving up on top of that ledge to feed. Once those bait fish are up there, the bass are going to move up on top of that ledge, and they're going to be much easier to catch. However, when the bass are suspended over the drop, like in this third example here, they're going to be much more difficult to catch. In this case, you're going to have to employ different baits than you normally would offshore and use a mixture of unique baits and retrieves to trigger these fish into biting. This is one of the more advanced skills of offshore bass fishing, so let me walk you through all the baits that I use and how I retrieve them to catch these inactive suspended bass. Now let's get into the top baits that I throw for suspended bass on offshore ledges. The first bait I would recommend, especially to new offshore anglers, is a swim bait. This is by far the easiest of the baits I'm going to talk about in terms of targeting suspended bass because if you're throwing this swim bait on a ledge, all you need to do is cast it out, let it sink down to the bottom, and then just slowly reel it in. You don't want to reel it really fast, maybe just barely turn that reel handle, keeping it within two to three feet of the bottom. And as that bait comes off the ledge and over the creek channel, it's going to be right in line with where the lip of that ledge was. And those fish that are suspended in line with the top of that ledge are basically going to be right in the path of that swim bait. It'll then go right through those fish and you'll be able to get that bait in front of those fish very easily. These other baits take a little bit more understanding of 
where the bait is in the water and can be a little bit tricky to throw. So a swim bait is a great place to start if you're learning how to catch suspended bass on these offshore ledges. My go-to swim bait is actually a pretty big one because I like to catch big bass on the ledges, and that is a Mega Bass Mag Draft Freestyle swim bait in the albino pearl color. It is a six inch swim bait, it's real heavy, and I'm throwing on a pretty heavy jig head here too. This is the Blade Runner one ounce underspin. I like that underspin because it gives that bait a little bit extra flash and it just attracts those suspended bass that aren't super lethargic. I also feel like those fish that are inactive want just one big meal. So I like to throw bigger baits that just get in front of those fish's face and will trigger them and get them to bite. This bait here is obviously not the most weedless option though. So if I'm going to be fishing around a little bit more cover, maybe brush piles or standing timber, I'll also maybe drop down a little bit to the Mega Bass five inch spark shad on a three quarter ounce Buckeye weedless swim bait jig head. This is a double cable guard on it, which protects it from trouble, cover, stuff like that. And that five inch spark shad is still a pretty beefy bait, a good morsel for those bass. And this works really well if you're around a lot of cover. Between those two swim baits, I can get a lot of fish in the boat and it's definitely a great way to target those suspended bass. Another option in the swim bait category though is also a scrounger head. This is another big scrounger bait or a big offshore bait. And this is the seven inch uh, Jenko fishing tremor shad on a one ounce tremor shad head. This is a scrounger head with this big straight tail jerk bait style bait. It wobbles in the water. And I haven't had as much success with the scrounger head as I have with the mag draft freestyle and the spark shad. But some days for whatever reason, they like the scrounger head a little bit more than that other big swim bait. So I will mix this in every once in a while if I'm on a big school of fish on the ledges. And it's just another option to try. But honestly, I would just start with this mag draft freestyle or that spark shad, especially if you're getting into offshore ledge fishing for the first time. Really quick, if you're enjoying the detailed instruction in this video, then head to our website, fishthemoment.com, and check out our virtual seminars page. Here you'll find seminar recordings from past seminars we've done on a variety of bass fishing topics from seasonal bass movement, electronics, offshore bass fishing, and how weather affects bass. These are three hour seminars with extremely detailed graphics and instruction that we spent hours putting together so that they're extremely clear and impactful. If you want to take your fishing to the next level and enjoy the content on this channel, definitely check out our virtual seminars because I know you'll love the content. Check them out at fishthemoment.com. Now, in terms of my equipment for that swim bait, I kind of uh, rushed over that. I'm throwing this uh, Mega Bass Mag Draft Freestyle on honestly my new favorite rod from Denali, and that is the Covert Light 7 foot 6 heavy action moderate bait casting rod. It's actually their swim jig rod and it has a lot more tip than your standard heavy action rod. It has a lot of tip, which allows these fish to get the swim bait in their mouth a lot better. One thing about swim bait fishing is that there's a lot of plastic there for those fish to crush into their mouth. And you want to have a rod that gives a little bit of delay. That moderate um, action rod will load up a little bit slower than a fast action rod, but you still have a heavy power to this rod so that you can drive that big hook home on that big swim bait. So that's a great rod there. And I just throw this on 14 pound Sunline FC Sniper fluorocarbon and a Black Max reel. The line size is not as important, but I wouldn't throw anything more than maybe 16 pound test with that swim bait. The next bait I use to target these offshore suspended bass is honestly my personal favorite, my go-to bait, which is a hair jig. It's definitely harder to fish than the swim bait, but I feel like I can catch a lot of different size fish on this bait as opposed to just the really big ones. You can catch spotted bass, smallmouth, and largemouth on a hair jig. And the one I throw is a half ounce Cumberland Pro hair jig. It has about four to five inches of this bucktail hair with a feather mixed in. And I just like it in some type of white color. It can be white and blue, white and sartreuse. As long as it has some white in there, you're good to go. And the way you fish these hair jigs is casting them out on the ledges. And then you're going to reel your reel handle five or six times really fast with your rod pointed up in the sky. Then you're gonna let that bait fall on the semi slack line back down to the bottom and then reel that bait, have it pop up off the bottom, and let it fall back down. 
It's not necessarily difficult to fish, but it does take a little bit of time to get used to the retrieve. And I'll link some videos down below where I show myself fishing the hair jig, explaining how to throw it, all the equipment, everything I use with it, all that stuff. Now for this hair jig, what I'm throwing it on is a uh, Denali Covert Light 7 foot 2 medium heavy action worm and jig rod. It has a little bit of bend to the tip, not a ton though, because I'm not using the heaviest hook on this hair jig. And I'm pairing this with 12 pound Sunline FC Sniper fluorocarbon. That 12 pound fluorocarbon is crucial for this light hair jig to give it the right action. And you definitely want to go with that lighter line when fishing this hair jig. I normally pair it on a seven to one gear ratio reel, but right now I'm throwing a six, four to one Abu Garcia Black Max. Not the end of the world, doesn't it make that big of a difference? But that hair jig is a great way to target those suspended bass, again, on those ledges. And usually what happens is that you'll get your bites as that jig gets reeled up off the bottom and then starts falling into the creek channel. You'll find that if you let that bait fall into the creek channel, it'll fall way longer than it needs to. And that's where the little bit of the challenge with using this bait comes in. You have to know that when you reel it, it's going to fall, let's say eight to 10 feet. And if it starts falling further than that or longer than that, you need to start reeling it again. If you let it fall all the way down to the bottom of the creek channel, it's gonna get out of the strike zone. So it does take a little bit of practice to kind of dial in knowing where that bait is in the water column. But when you figure it out, it's absolutely deadly. The next bait I like to throw on those suspended bass is a flutter spoon. This bait takes a lot more practice and it takes getting some confidence in to actually throw it because it's just a big hunk of metal. And it's also kind of hard to cast, but once you get these flutter spoons dialed in, they can catch a ton of big fish. Honestly, I don't throw them as much anymore because I feel like I can catch the fish equally as well in the hair jig and the swim bait. But sometimes I'll pick it up just kind of like that scrounger head and throw it around and maybe get an extra bite or two out of a suspended school of bass. I have a couple I throw. This is the Striking Sexy Spoon, which is a five and a half inch spoon, like a one ounce. And one thing I always do guys when I'm fishing these flutter spoons is I like to put a split ring, uh, or sorry, a swivel on top of the o-ring that goes on the spoon that swivel will prevent line twist and the strike king sexy spoon doesn't come with one but the other spoon i throw actually does come stock with one already and that is this ben parker mini magnum spoon this is a lot bigger spoon six and a half inches in length and sometimes those fish like these really big spoons. I'll make a whole other video dedicated to fishing Magnum flutter spoons because that's kind of a whole other niche that only works in very specific situations. I'm not gonna get into this in this video because honestly, it's only applicable in a very small number of situations. But uh, if you guys are interested, I'll make a video on that. But this mini Magnum spoon, the six and a half inch, works great on a lot of different fisheries and can get some really big bites. And it comes with that barrel swivel at the top already to prevent line twist and a feathered treble. So this Ben Parker spoon, a little bit pricier, but it's definitely worth the investment because it comes with all the right terminal tackle and equipment attached to it. And you know, the way you fish these flutter spoons, you're firing them out there and you're basically setting the hook with your rod. And I actually kind of do a double take where I'll jerk the rod up two times in a row, get that spoon to pop off the bottom and then let it fall to the bottom on a slack line. The trick with these flutter spoons is that they have a nice wide fall to them that's very erratic and those suspended bass will follow that spoon back down to the bottom and as you rip it off the bottom and it starts to fall again, they'll eat it. They are pretty notorious for losing fish because you just have this uh, one treble hook down here and a bunch of weight on that spoon. So you'll lose fish because they have a lot of leverage on this bait. And it's again, not the number one bait I go to. I would prefer to catch them on the hair jig or the swim bait because you just have one solid hook and the landing ratio is so much better. But sometimes you just have to throw this because it's the bait that gets them in the boat. I'll also sometimes throw a stinger hook above the spoon, though I haven't been doing it recently because I've snagged a few fish doing it. And I don't really like snagging fish in the side or hurting the fish that way. And honestly, I don't like throwing spoons all that much because I feel like you might actually be snagging some of those fish. And I don't really like doing that, especially with live scope nowadays. So I've kind of gone away from spoons a little bit, stuck to more of the swim baits and hair jigs, but it's definitely a great bait if you want to give it a try. I'm throwing this on a Denali Covert Light 7 foot 6 medium heavy action worm and jig rod. This rod actually has a fast action, unlike that medium 
or that uh, seven foot moderate action that I was showing earlier with the swim bait. And that's because I really want to get a hook set quick on these fish with the spoon and get a tight line so I can just winch those fish in and give them no opportunity to get off. I just basically set the hook, grind on them as fast as I can and try to swing them in the boat because if you give them any slack or any time to run, they will throw that spoon. Just pairing that on some 16 pound FC Sniper Sunline fluorocarbon, seven to one gear ratio, black max reel. Uh, I think it's, the, it's actually called the Max Z reel, 70 bucks or 60 bucks. I found at the Academy. And this little setup does great for me when I'm fishing the flutter spoon. The last rig I've started throwing a lot over the past few years for suspended bass offshore is the Neko rig. I actually made a full dedicated video about this rig just about a month ago and right after I made that video, about a week after I posted it, Brandon Lester won a Bassmaster Elite Series event fishing offshore with the Neko rig. It is an awesome little finesse technique that excels at targeting suspended bass offshore. The way I work this thing is actually working it up off the bottom by raising my rod pretty high up off the bottom or off into the air, and then I let that bait fall back to the bottom. What I'm trying to do is swim that worm up five to 10 feet off the bottom, and then let it fall back through suspended bass. And a lot of times I find these fish actually bite this bait either when it's sitting dead stick down the bottom after I move it 15 or 20 feet, or they'll bite it right as it comes to the apex of my pole, and then it starts to fall again, that's when they'll eat it. My go-to bait with this Neko rig is the Missile Baits six and a half inch quiver worm. And I'll put a 332nd or eighth ounce Dobbins nail weight in there with an owner weedless Neko hook. This setup right here is detailed in another video. Again, I'll link down below. And I'll just kind of let that video explain all the details because there's a lot of nuance that goes into this bait and explains why it's so effective. So check out that video down in the description if you want more details. The way I rig this bait up as far as my equipment goes is I throw it on Denali Lithium Pro 7'4 medium heavy multi-purpose spinning rod. This rod has some good backbone to it here, but enough tip so that when I set the hook on those fish in deeper water, I can drive that hook home and pull them away from cover. I pair that with a 20 pound braided line mainline. This is some Sunline braided line with an eight pound Sunline FC Sniper fluorocarbon leader line. I like eight to 10 pound tests with this Neko rig because I will throw it around brush and timber and stuff like that. And I don't want super light line. It's also kind of a beefier bait. So six pound test is a little bit too light for my liking. And I just pair that with an Abu Garcia Max Pro spinning reel. I guess it's like 39 or 40 bucks at Academy. So a good little setup there. And honestly, this Neko rig is a great alternative to these more power fishing baits when those fish are not biting. And what I'll normally do is start with the swim bait or the hair jig or the flutter spoon to get that school fired up, then pick up the Neko rig to pick up the stragglers and get a few extra bites. Sometimes you can throw that Neko rig in there first and actually get the fish fired up, then start catching them on the other baits as well. So just kind of experiment with the order of these baits, throw all of them on those offshore suspended bass, and you're going to have a lot of success catching them offshore. Hopefully you learned something from this video guys in terms of how to target those suspended bass, what they look like on the fish finder, and also the baits to throw to actually get those fish in the boat. If you enjoyed this video, I really appreciate if you left a like down below, it helps us with the YouTube algorithm, and also subscribe to the Fish the Moment YouTube channel for more content just like this. Thanks for checking out this video. We'll see you all next one.